Tennessee beat Virginia 49 to 13 yesterday. We were at this one over there. It was not the once upon a Saturday tour stop. That was Thursday night. We just went over there because it was in our backyard. So you look at 49 points being hung and you say, wow, Tennessee exploded out of the gate. No, they did not. They did not. In fact, in a shortened game because of new clock rules, they found a way to hang half a hundred, even though out of their first five drives, four of them ended in a punt or a turnover. So it was kind of slow out of the gate. But that was normal college football stuff. That's a casual concern. That's not a, that's not a legitimate concern. That's just a casual concern. Joe Milton, I got a story to tell you about him in a second. But Joe Milton, 21 of 30, 200 yards through the air, a couple of touchdowns, 33 on the ground, another couple of touchdowns. I don't know that I could have expected any more from him in a debut as a starter. I, I was happy. I was pleased with what I saw from him. Offensive line, though, was a big concern for Tennessee coming into this game. And that's really the area where, all things considered, Cooper Mays is out. I thought that unit stepped up. You're not going to go back if you have access to all 22 film and look at it and say, oh, what a clinic, just procedural, look at this. They annihilated Virginia. They weren't going to. It's a bunch of new pieces anyway. And then you got one of your focal points out. They did did more than well enough to obviously – win a game and run away from a team and win a game. But Joe Milton on that opening drive, I think it was, he, he's coming right down to our end of the field. And there was a fourth down play. I think it was fourth and five. And he went through progressions and he checked that ball down and they got it in the end zone. And I was over on the Tennessee sideline. They, they were so ecstatic, not just that they scored, but they saw him do what as a coaching staff, they hope he has the maturation to do or the maturity to do. And so I just kind of always tuck that kind of stuff away because that's week one. You know, it's the kind of place you expect the guy to be in week six. Week one, though, that's just a good sign. It's Virginia. I know what the comment section will say. Well, yeah, it's just Virginia. I get it. It's like a blanket statement you can make about 95% of teams who played in week one. But Josh Heupel develops quarterbacks. I could go on a hype video one day, I think. Josh Heupel develops quarterbacks, though. So when I see them have three running backs get 12-plus carries, I I see 5.5 yards per carry, and I have what they had on the offensive line, and that's my starting point. I do have legitimate reason with Tennessee quarterbacks to think it's only onward and upward from here. I don't say that about everyone. I just trust the developmental process there at that position to where, I mean, if if I got 52 carries, 287 yards at the tailback position, So I'm solid there. They trust a number of guys at that position. I know that quarterback is what it is and will get better for me, barring injury. I I feel good. (laughs) I don't know what else to tell you. I feel really good. There was a point early in this game where Ramel Keaton dropped a bomb. Would have been a bomb, probably touchdown pass, but at the very least, a long completion. So I told myself, that looks like it was about 65 in the air. He looks like he threw the ball about 65 yards in the air. And I went back and watched it. That's what, pretty much what it was, about 65 in the air. So before this game, I got over to the stadium a little bit early. We had some stuff to do. And I got over to the stadium early. I went up to the press box because I cannot explain to you in strong enough terms how much I love 11 a.m. kickoffs because we get to eat breakfast. Big breakfast guy. And so I'm sitting up there. Uh, Producer Jesse's next to me. We're talking to some folks. Tennessee has arrived at the stadium. So it's before normal warm-ups. Milton's down there throwing. I didn't really realize. I wasn't paying a lot of attention. He's still in his, his, like, hoodie. I mean, he's not even in warm-up clothes yet. So I see out of the corner of my eye what looks like the trajectory of a punt. Uh, If you've been in football stadiums, you know what that looks like. And so it's the difference between a pop-up and a home run ball, usually. And so I look down there, and a receiver catches it. Like, I'm kind of seeing this out of the corner of my eye. I look down there, and Milton's throwing. He's on the opposite 30-yard line. And I watch him, and he is no crow hop. He's just throwing balls 70 yards in the air to receivers running, like, simulated 20-yard go routes. I've never seen him do it in person. I've heard stories about it. I've never seen his arm in person until yesterday. Then he backed up, and he was throwing it 80 in the air. And it still looked effortless. And I was texting some buddies saying, you will not believe what I'm watching right now. So then in the game, 
when they finally threw it deep and it was dropped so it's not on anyone's like you know highlight reel he just he just flicks the ball 65 in the air dime just dropped it right in a bucket no problem I don't know that there's a stronger arm out there like Anthony Richardson was a total freak of nature last year with his arm strength I don't know what kind of charity we have to set up to make it happen I just I'd love to see those two shot for shot I, look, I think Milton may be able to throw the ball 100 yards in the air. If he gets a little bit of wind behind him and he double crow hops it, I don't know, man. He looked like he was thrown on the moon yesterday in warm-ups. You'd have to see it. I know, I know you may be calling BS on that. I'm telling you it was effortless. He's thrown the ball 70 yards in the air, no crow hop. So I'm sure a bunch of you can do that with Nerf balls. I know it's not impressive to some of you, but to me it was.